Welcome back to Hungry for History. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the history of the ancient cooking technique called Pao in China and show you how to cook a whole chicken with this technique. Let's get it started! Pao in Chinese means to wrap the meat in vegetable leaves, then place clay all around it and bake it directly in the fire. When you serve the meat, first remove the clay crust and cut up the meat. Pao is an interesting character. The left part indicates fire and the right part means bag, also means to cover or enclose something in material. Pao as a cooking technique dates back at least to the 8th century BCE. Shi Jing, the classic of poetry, also called the Book of Songs, is the oldest existing collection of Chinese poetry, comprising works dating from the 11th to the 6th centuries BCE. One of the poems describes how a host prepared rabbit meat for his guests. The rabbit meat was cooked in a variety of ways. One was to wrap a rabbit with clay while fur was still on and rose on fire. During the Warring State period, Qu Yuan, the great patriot that was celebrated for the Duanwu Festival, we actually have a video about him and the festival. The link is here if you are interested. Qu Yuan describes the lamb cooked in clay was offered along with sugar cane juice as sacrifice to summon the soul of the deceased. Li Ji, the Book of Rites compiled in the 1st and 2nd century AD, describes the social forms and ceremonial rites of the Zhou Dynasty. It has a recipe of cooking suckling pig by using the technique of pao. Quote, for the pao, they took a suckling pig, had it cut it open and removed the entrails, filled the belly with dates. They then wrapped it around with straws and reeds, which they plastered with clay and baked it on fire. When the clay was all dry, they broke it off. Unquote. The pig was then fried and slow cooked in soup for three days and nights before served. This cooking technique was then recorded in the earliest Chinese medical writing, Wu Shi'er Bing Fang, Recipes for 52 Ailments. It was buried in a tomb in 168 BCE under the Han Dynasty, but the actual date of writing might have dated earlier. The text presents more than 250 cures for ailments such as warts, hemorrhoids, and snake bites. The prescription it recommends for treating hemorrhoids is interesting but weird. Quote, choke a yellow hen with soy paste and let it die. Wrap it in miscanthus leaves, dab with clay over it and bake it in the fire. When the crust is dry and well done, eat the chicken. And then use the feathers to fumigate the anus. I don't know how effective the prescription is, but the prescription might be the world's oldest recipe for clay wrapped chicken which is better known as Baker's Chicken today. Why is it called Baker's Chicken? There are several legends about the origins of Baker's Chicken. The most common one is that a beggar caught a chicken in the wild. He wanted to cook the chicken but did not have any pots and condiments on hand. Disappointed, he looked down and saw the soil under his feet and suddenly had an idea. He then killed the chicken, removed the internal organs, and covered it with mud. He dug a pit, made a fire, and roasted the chicken over the fire. When the mud was dried, he cracked it open and found that the chicken feathers came off along with the mud. The chicken was done tender and juicy. Another legend involves the Emperor Qianlong of the Qin Dynasty. When the emperor traveled to Jiangnan, which referred to the south of the lower reaches of the Yangtze River in the late 18th century, he was lost in the wild and the beggar gave him a cooked chicken which he considered a delicacy. The hungry emperor finds the chicken so delicious that he even introduced it to royal cuisine after he returned to his palace. Since the name beggar's chicken was somewhat embarrassing, it was renamed as the wealthiest chicken. This is why it's also called the wealthiest chicken in some places. Now I'm going to show you how to make the beggar's chicken. I don't have a historic recipe for the dish, but I will follow the historic cooking technique of Pao to cook the chicken. The only thing that was difficult to get for the dish was the right clay. I called a few ceramic shops in the area where I live and find one that is supposed to be non-toxic. While I was told that the clay I'm using is likely non-toxic, 
I feel that it's prudent to make sure that the chicken won't be contaminated and will cover the chicken with the aluminum foil before applying the clay. To make this dish, you need a 4 to 5 pound whole chicken, 2 lotus or banana leaves. As for marinade, you need 1 tablespoon of light soy sauce, 1 tablespoon of dark soy sauce, 2 tablespoons of Chinese cooking wine, 1 teaspoon 5 spice powder, 1 tablespoon of minced garlic, 1 tablespoon minced ginger, and 1 tablespoon minced green onion. You also need to fill up the cavity of the chicken with some stuffing. 8 to 10 dried shiitake mushrooms, 2 stalks of green onion, 5 garlic cloves, 3 small chunks of ginger, 2 cinnamon sticks, and 3 whole star anise. As for the crust, you need 3 pounds non-toxic ceramic clay and some kitchen string. First of all, clean the chicken under tap water, allow to drain thoroughly. Soak the dried shiitake mushrooms in hot water. In a small bowl, add light soy sauce, dark soy sauce, cooking wine, minced garlic, ginger, and green onion, and five spice powder. Mix the ingredients together until you have a paste consistency. Spray the sauce all over the chicken, including the wings and legs. Loosen the breast skin and brush the marinade sauce under the skin as well. Cover the bowl and refrigerate the chicken overnight. Next morning, start with preparing wrapping leaves. If you use dry lotus leaves, soak them in hot water for at least an hour before use. If you use frozen banana leaves, then let them thaw at room temperature. Wash them and pat dry with paper towel or dry cloth. Then drain the mushrooms, remove chicken from marinade, wrap the chicken cavity with the rest of the marinade sauce. Fill the cavity with mushroom, green onion, garlic, ginger, cinnamon sticks, and star anise. Close the opening with toothpicks, pull in the legs, and tie them together with kitchen string. Place the chicken on the top of one banana leaf. Pull in the wings, tie the leaf around the chicken. Then add the second leaf and cover up the whole chicken. Secure the leaves in place with kitchen string. Then cover the whole chicken with two pieces of aluminum foil, one from the bottom and another from the top. Make two pieces of clay that are wide enough to cover the chicken. Each piece is about half centimeter. Place the wrapped chicken in the center of one flattened clay and lay the other one over the top of the chicken. Seal the edges of the clay by pressing it closed with your fingers. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and bake the chicken for about 3 hours. After 3 hours, remove the chicken from the oven and let it rest for about 20 minutes before you open it up. Here is the chicken after we let it rest for about 20 minutes. If you look closely at the bottom part of the clay shell, you may notice some cracks. Those cracks formed when the juice of the chicken tried to escape. This actually makes me really excited to taste the chicken because I think it's gonna be super tender. And I really wish that you could smell the aroma coming from it right now because it smells delicious. Yeah, it smells really good. A fun fact, this is actually my first time to work with clay. I cannot wait to crack it open. <laughs> One, two, <gasps> okay. All right. I All think right. That'll do, it. do you want it to help me? Sure. Wow. Some of the pieces are really stuck under there. Yeah. You know, I've never smelled banana leaves before, but it really adds just wow. this freshness to the roasted chicken smell. Wow. This looks smells incredible. And looks delicious. Let me get that for you. So I'll get this. The skin came off a little bit. That's how mm. things go. We're obviously not pros at carving uh, bird, but 
by the way it smells or pro is it cooking it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got a little sample piece here. Like at a fancy restaurant, you just get a small piece. We have that. All right, would you like to taste I it? I already taste it. <laughs> okay. I already had a piece. What do you think? Typically, tasting the white meat of chicken that's roasted does not have the flavor or thoroughly into the meat as this does. It's not dry at all. It's very juicy <laughs> and tender. Let the chicken marinate in the refrigerator for overnight. Really helps the flavor to sink into the meat. <laughs> this is delicious. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you enjoy the baker's chicken. We thoroughly enjoyed it. If you make this recipe, please tell me what do you think about it in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe. It'll really help us out. Have a great day. Have a great day. Bye-bye.